So at this stage, I feel like we're pretty solid on having a landscape that we want to now texture. And in order to texture each biome, again, it's this icon here. So let's go to the first biome and select the texture icon. And then here you can see the first material that is automatically applied to each biome, which is just pure white. If we were to remove this, you can see a really interesting effect on the terrain that's really reflective. All right, so as you can imagine, there's going to be many more options here for materials. I'm assuming, you know, we're going to be adding the ability to add textures and material types, being able to adjust many more settings regarding materials. But for this current state of development, it's just the color, the metalness and the roughness. And if you were to click on the color graph here, you get an RGB slider to change this any variety color that you want for now. As far as materials, Stefan, what sort of, are there gonna be any new inclusion of materials types or texture types? Because I know before in World Creator 2, it was just the, the albedo, the normal and roughness, if I remember correctly. Um, is the engine going to try and implement any other types of materials like a cavity map or a metalness map or specular or, or even a, a height map, for example? Yes, yeah. So we're going to support height maps, uh, also called displacement maps. Um, there are more, but, but uh, we are not fully finished with the list right now. So also my many requests uh, for, for, for substance. But we need to see um, if it makes sense at all, if it really makes sense at all. Yeah. So for now, the colors, the textures coming for sure. We will have gradients. Um, yeah. We need to see for, for, uh, for more. Of course. Of course. Yeah, that makes sense. There's, I'm sure there's a lot that's going to be to uh, be added to um, the, of trial and error. So what I've done here is I've just gone ahead and added a few, uh, changed a few colors here and added a new tan color. And I'm wanting to change the height range of this, but for now, the height range only goes so far, but we could easily change that by going to back to the terrain tab and we could decrease or increase the noise height to get the full coverage here that we want. So if my were to increase this, it's going to, <laughs> that's really going to increase it. So let's decrease our noise height a tad so that we can make sure that that texture color is covering most of the terrain here, maybe not that much. There we go, somewhere around there seems to be fine. And let's go back to that particular biome and color. And then we can easily adjust how that's being smoothed out. We can adjust it this way if we want. So that's really good inclusive um, way of texturing. And of course we can add many more distribution rules to this, but I think I'm just going to be satisfied with this one for now. And then the other distribution rule that I want to add here is a cavity distribution rule. And this time, let's set the cavity from concave down to convex. Actually, I want to show you a neat trick real quick. So let's go back to concave. And then let's set the strength level to be around 0.28. And the step size to be something pretty small, somewhere around 0.1 one two there we go all right so now we have this in a concave area but say that we're in this case i'm wanting to texture just the the rocky area of this so we could do the convex but in fact let's take this rule distribution here and hover it underneath the height distribution level here and then in doing so, you'll see that this new little option pops up here. And this is the how the operation is blending with the previous option. So now it's set to multiply. We have add, we have subtract, and we have min and max. So multiply is really just going to blend the two effects together. So as you can see, not much has changed. But I want to change this multiply to subtract. And now it's going to basically highlight all of those areas that are in reverse of my concave. So concave, it was before going to texture all these dark areas you see, but I want this new color to highlight all of the non-concave, but not really the convex areas either. So that's one really handy way to use the blending operation here. Um, could you try something different? Um, could yeah. you set to... Uh, could you set, uh, just reset, um, use, uh, multiply, please. Multiply on this. Yeah. I just want to try something. 
and now add the invert effect. Uh, this? No, no, yeah, yeah. Same. Should be. Oh, it's the same. Okay, okay, that. Okay, this this would work then as well. Okay. Well, Good hold on know. a second. It no. may look, look. No, it's a difference. Yeah, it it's is a difference. difference. You're look, right. Look right. Look right here when I remove okay, this. Add, okay, add this effect. No, yeah, add there the we cavity. Go. Add or 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 just try um, add the cavity to the height. In, into height, right? Uh huh. And now add the uh, invert, invert effect. That's it. Yeah, that okay, that looks really similar. Yeah. Okay. But okay. I mean, it's good to know that many ways moving mm -hmm. uh, going to Rome. I mean, this is just a wording. <laughs> yeah, that's actually really nice. I like that because it then you know that this cavity is really just affecting the the height specifically itself. Yeah. So yeah, we I can show like I was thinking for World Creator Three showing like many many five minute long videos of tips and tricks of things like that instead of having these long tutorials. I think tips and tricks when is really handy when it comes to things like this, knowing how to get different effects on stacking different ways. All right, so I'm going to run through and add a, another material here. And this time I'm wanting to basically add a color that's going to add highlights to most of the rocky edges. We don't want a full coverage here, but we want to add a little bit of pop to those. So let's change this color to somewhere that's pretty close to our terrain color, but really desaturated and maybe it's pretty light like that. So like a really light sky sort of uh, purpley color here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a new rule here and it's going to be also the cavity rule and this time we're going to choose convex you can see it's it's highlighting most of the bolder areas but i want to make this really small so let's increase the strength up to 75 percent and we'll decrease the step size to be really tiny something around 0.02 and you can see when I did that, it's basically added these highlights around all of these sharp edges of rocks, a bit too close, around all the sharp edges of rocks, as well as added highlights around most of the rocky edges that I wanted to remain as a rocky substance. This is going to sort of not only colorize the rocks to be how they would be in real life as far as adding that edge erosion, but it's also going to make the sun in the engine here kind of make those areas pop out and stick further out into our, our rendered screen here. All right, so let's add one more material to this biome and let's add somewhat of a darker sand dirt texture. So we're going to go back to this sandy sort of color, maybe adjust it to be pretty close to this sand. And then let's make its distribution based on the slope. And I love the slope filter because it really adds these nice um, patches of uh, different colors or textures to certain areas of the slope. So this slope here, we want to be relatively low. So I'm gonna set this to around 34 max. And I want the blend to also be pretty low, around 20%. Now this time, I still want to keep those highlighted textures that we made for our rocks. So instead of the this new color being behind this color, let's just drag it. And you can see that little green bar appears, and that's going to move the texture in front of the other texture, changing that hierarchy level. I think this is a tad bit too dark so let's lighten it up just a little bit and then maybe on the highlights here we lower their weight value just ever so slightly to around 80 percent and there we go we've just added a little extra subtlety to the terrain so now let's jump on over to the next biome and add a few more filters so that we can we can highlight some of the flow distribution in our terrain, which is a really nice feature that I'm sure uh, Stefan and the team are really proud of, the fluid simulations, basically. Yes, we are. <laughs> All right, so we're going to add a material, going to add a, another sort of mid-brown color something a little bit darker. And we are also going to add a slope distribution, set this max to 20 this time to something really low. And we want the blend to also be relatively low because I'm wanting to add a much more broad effect to this particular color. As you can see what it's doing here, it's, it's adding, like I said, a really nice broad effect on top of the darker zones. 
And then here's where we start adding a really nice pop of color. So we're gonna add a red color in this case. So it's going to be somewhat of a brighter red. So we got this pretty bright red dark color here. We can change it however we want. Maybe it's somewhere in the mid-tone here. But this is one nice uh, new rule distribution that we've used before in World Creator 2 series. But I feel like in World Creator 3, this particular distribution is a little bit more enhanced and has a much nicer effect. So we're going to add the angled filter here. And you can instantly see that it's almost emulating fluid-like notions, but we're distributing it based on the angle of the terrain in regards to the position of the terrain. So let's select the angle rule. And I want to change the angle angle to be pretty much anything, but I want to highlight this valley here. So I found through trial and error again that a number of a round, let's see, let's highlight this side of the wall first, or this side of the terrain first. So let's go to about 157 in angle. And we have a smoothness of 0.2 here as far as our max. So if we were to increase this, you can see that it is broadening out just a little bit more. And we can lower that low value as well. So there's a lot of adjustments that you can do here. But I think a smoothness of the default max at 0.2 is perfect in this case. This might be a little too purpley. So let's darken this up just a tad into more of a red category here. So now let's add another texture or another material that's really similar to this one, but a tad bit darker. So we're gonna go back to the red category and add something that's really dark. Maybe maybe it's more on the pur little purpley side. And on this distribution, we're also going, going to do a, another angle, but this time let's change the angle to 257. That way we get a flow very similar to right here cutting through the center. So this isn't implementing um, exactly flow or fluid, but it's sort of highlighting the um, filter that we had of the erosion find. So it's highlighting the erosion find, picking up on those angles, and it's having a really nice um, uh, stratified effect on the terrain. And the next color we're going to add is some sort of mid-brown tone. So we're going to quickly add a new filter that's about a mid-brown area. And this time we're going to do a cavity distribution. Now this is one thing that we could do. We could do the cavity like this, or we could also, I'll show you two different ways. So for the cavity, let's actually hit the effects button here and go down to flow distribution. And that's going to instantly add some liquefied effects right on top of the terrain. And I'm sure this is going to um, be one of the most fun distribution uh, properties for many people, wouldn't you say, Stefan? Yeah, it would be. I mean, you can use further effects and you even, even improve this. If you add the flow distribution, add small flow on top. So, I mean, you, you, you also can add multiple flow distributions and mix them all together. So this is also possible here for one single quality. So basically adding much more diverse effects with uh, fluids. Yeah. So that's really cool. So you can have a um, flow distribution that's pretty thick in one area where you're wanting to really kind of trick the system to showcase some sort of um, collection area. So if the flow was not as fluid as it looks like now on the screen, you can reduce the um, sort of viscosity of the liquid to affect mostly broad areas. And then you can do another flow yes. distribution that's more fine that kind of uh, trails off from the fatter areas, making it feel like you have ponds and pools collecting and it, they're, they're sort of overflowing when it rains, which is, I hadn't actually thought about that until you just mentioned it, but that's a really cool uh, a way of texturing that we can definitely look forward to in World Creator 3. So this is one way that we can add many different effects to the terrain. We can change the iterations of this flow distribution. Um, let's see, let's try and do something a little bit different here. Change the range strength, and we'll cover this more in greater detail later on whenever things are a bit more polished. And though they seem pretty good polished right now, but I know there's many more different effects and things that we wanna do 
and add to the terrain. So you can see if I were to hide and unhide this flow effect. So the colors that we have here are pretty strong on my add and we can go through and tweak those a bit further, but adding some of this flow distribution on top of that was basically going to allow more blending effect with all the different sediments that you would imagine uh, on a terrain such as this. And coincidentally, just for fun, let's go back down here go to the environment tab, go down to water, and yes, we're going to showcase the water here. Let's lower this some, maybe not too much. You, you can also fine tune it if you, if you click on the text box and if you click on it and move your mouse. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I forgot about that, yeah. I noticed in some sliders doing this provides more fine, like the yeah. um, iterations are much smaller. Right. So now you can see that even adding water to this, you can see some of the effect below. And I'm sure later on in World Creator 3, we'll be able to even affect the filters and materials underneath the water line, similar to how the uh, relative to ocean level is in World Creator 2. But maybe you have some uh, fun tips and tricks of ideas that you're willing to share, or that if you if you have anything in mind uh, for how the terrain can be treated under the waterline. This will come. It's not available right now, but uh, this will come. I mean, in World Creator 3, you will be able to have multiple water planes. So adding a water distribution, there you can select the water plane that uh, you want to reference to and mm -hmm. use that one for, yeah, creating the distribution rule. Okay, perfect. Same for the filters. Yeah. And then lastly, just also for fun, let's try and lower some of the lighting a little bit, set the mood. So you can see I can e easily change the atmosphere, the lighting and everything based on how we want it to be in our terrain. And it's provides some really nice lighting effects on our finished product.